you know, friends, we've got such varied beliefs. And, you know, I put that down, of course, to, well, we all have different understanding when it comes to the Word of God. And, of course, we have to put that down to several different factors, of course. Of course, a way that we read things and understand things. And, uh, but, of course, you get people that say, okay, well, well who's right? Well, very good question, right? The thing is, now you can be on some things really, really, uh, I guess, out there. It just depends on what. Now, I'll, I'll listen to somebody, if they you know talk to me uh, about something or say, hey, let me pass something by you. I'll, I'll listen, you know. And I'll give my opinion and just say, okay, well, <laughs> if it's something, you know, like I said, totally out there, I'm going to say, okay, well, I think you might want to look at that again and pray about that or, you know, because that just, and, you know, look up, look that up in the Word of God because that just doesn't really sync with the Word of God. You know, if somebody asks your opinion, be honest. Tell them if it's, you know, let your, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay, you know, yeah, get, get them. But if it's something in the Word of God, say, oh, well, okay. You know, I, I, I don't know, but I'll do more re looking up on that research and, you know, see what I think about that. There's no harm in that. Uh, because uh, if somebody's got a revelation on something, the Word of God, something that I've never seen or been... Uh, it's, not, it's something that or revelation revealed. That's something that's never been revealed to me. Uh, I, you know, I, it's something if it's something new. I want to learn, don't you? Uh, and likewise, something that has been revealed to me. You know, if I, but I want others to, if 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 it's something that is meant for other people. Now, some things are just meant for the person that it's revealed to, right? Amen. But if it's something you know the Lord wants people to me to me or or someone else to reveal to or teach, then by all means, you know, spread the word, teach or preach and or or share with others. Um, but as I said, you know, such varied beliefs and teaching and a lot of it. Once again, here we go talking about it. It comes down to denominationalism. And such things, it's, it's when it comes down to the spiritual part, or using the word super, supernatural. Let me tell you something. If you if you use the word supernatural in some churches, they will about run you out. If you're if you're teaching or preaching, or even just use the word. I like say you're saying something in Sunday school. So, you know, if they use the word supernatural, oh my goodness, it's like you have, you've used a, uh, a curse word. People look, I, and this has not happened to me, and I'm not, I'm not, on, I'm not on a soapbox right now because of something that's happened to me, so don't think that. I'm just saying, look, that word is, it just means something that's above nature, that's above our natural realm you know and god and heaven and the the angelic realm and you know all this other stuff is above that super natural it's above that our god is a supernatural god we have a the bible is our guidebook to the spiritual slash supernatural right so nobody get, needs to get bent out of shape when you use certain terminology or when you have certain beliefs now uh well you know as long as the belief lines up with the, the bible uh like i said you can you can get into certain things that uh that just does not sync up with the biblical word and you can't prove it and if you can't do that well it's, it all comes down to speculation. So it's like, well, I don't know. You know, it's intriguing. Could be. You know, I don't think we're... 
privy to every single thing that, well, I know we're not, that God has ever done, doing, or will do, uh, which that's pretty awesome when you think about it. That gets me kind of excited because it leaves a little bit of a mystery, doesn't it? I like a good mystery anyway. So, and, I, and our God, he's all powerful. So who knows, who knows what he has done in the past, what he's doing right now that we don't know about and what he's going to do in the future. Uh, that's our God. Powerful, wonderful. But yet he still brought himself down to, humbled himself down to our, he condescended to a man of low estate, brought himself down to our level just to, so he could, save us because he loved us so much uh, you know read that right there should, should that tops everything that that should blow everything out of the water amen man i have to excuse me i'm drinking hot tea and if i i'm still running a little bit of a fever from, from this virus so if i turn on this fan over here and it gets a little bit noisy and i have to talk a little bit louder please just bear with me okay so uh but anyway anyway uh, uh, I, you know, I still wanted to do a video because the work of God, I feel like needs to go on as, as much as we can. And while I feel like I'm able to do it, then praise the Lord, we're going to do it, carry on. We don't let the enemy win, right? We're going to carry on as much as possible. So getting back to the whole denominational thing. We know that a lot of, well, we'll say this, it kind of cuts off, and I, you hate to call out denominational movements because you don't want to, you don't, because in doing that, it seems like you, you try to, you, you're trying to hammer in a wedge between that and call others out because I don't know who all listens to this and I, I don't want to offend anybody, but, but there are certain ones that have, that has beliefs and cuts off at a certain area that we, I'll say, I'll say, I'll, as, as, I'll, I'll use our church, for instance. We are a, you know, Church of God or slash Pentecostal church. And, you know, belief in the miracles and, you know, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, you know, and have seen that and seen the miracles happen. You know, take my word for it. I, you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, you know. Uh, but, like, say, for instance, the Baptist church will preach only to up to the point of the baptism of John, just water baptism. Uh, and I'm not putting anybody down for that. That's your belief system. So I'm not, you know. But what I'm getting at is getting more into the spiritual area. And once again, this goes along with the belief system. Now, you have also within just, and I'm not, and I'm not picking on any one, you know, denominational or denomination, because we'll say, for instance, and I'm just going to use these two because that's just the two of the ones I've used already. So you have Baptist and you have uh, the Pentecostal movement. You'll have varied beliefs within those two denominations and disclaimer here <laughs> i believe me i despise denominationalism I, I i would love nothing more than all of us being together worshiping god together all of us being saved walking in the will of god Worshiping God together as brothers and sisters in Christ, getting over. The, and I'm not talking about a big ecumenical movement like the Catholic Church wants us, us to be in, like doing some of the worship practices that they do, just because it goes what they do. And I'm just going to come right out and say it, and most people knows it. And I've said it on here before. A lot, of it, a lot of what they do goes strictly against the Word of God. If it's going to go against the word of God, then no, I don't want any part of it. Right? Your amen? Amen. Or tea. So, anyway, talking about the spiritual part of things. Talking about 
the angelic realm, the demonic realm, the things that we have to fight and deal with. As, say, as Pentecostals, uh, believers in the spiritual warfare. And as I said, there are some, maybe even that, that are, that call themselves Pentecostals or some that, that I've seen that may mention it, but I don't see it very much in practice. Now, there are some Baptists that are, I don't know what you exactly call it, maybe a, a full free will or full gospel Baptist, I'm not for sure. Don't take this wrong, don't, don't take anything I'm saying wrongly, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm not really sure. That belief in that and believe in the the spiritual and the supernatural and know that this stuff goes on and that and we have a spiritual enemy that we fight the devil's out there and with all this other stuff that the Bible talks about and we have a spiritual enemy that we fight so there's going to be varied beliefs even with under you know we just it's not it's not simple anymore we just have this denomination this denomination this denomination. we have splinter <laughs> groups within and all these other denominations. So, uh, just wanted to get that kind of first part to kind of lay the groundwork. Uh, even back in the day, and we're going to be in the uh, Book of Romans, then I'm going to hit some other, actually several different books to kind of get my uh, teaching across here. Uh, if I can, <laughs> if my mind will let me here, it's kind of all this world of different things. Uh, and it's going to be Romans in the first, first chapter, book of Romans. Uh, you know, the first chapter, going into the second, Paul's talking a lot about the beliefs and uh, mentioning, and this is where a lot of the people we'll say this the uh, the sodomites the homosexuals and lesbians and uh, the, the LGBTQT PRE HIG you know how, who knows how long the string of letters is eventually going to get uh, don't like it because you know that's where in the New Testament it mentions that and God condemns it just as well as the Old Testament so you know but as I said now they've got their own Bible don't I don't hate them I don't want to see anybody any, even that does that, I don't want to see him, anybody hurt, get get killed or get beat up or something. I don't hate him. I don't, but I don't hate. But I I hate their lifestyle. I hate their sinful lifestyle. God calls it an abomination. That lifestyle is not right according to the Word of God. Sorry. Well, you know, I well I'm, I take that back. I'm not sorry. I can't be sorry because it's the Word of God. I can't say I'm sorry and stand before God. He said, "Why?" You know, we have him ask, ask me, "Why did you say you're sorry? It was my word." <laughs> you know, see what I'm saying? So, forgive me. You know, I can't say that. The point is, it's the word of God. God's word trumps all. It trumps everything. You that do this, well. All of us are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And then, well, those that are saved, you know, at that point, we're golden, <laughs> right? We're, go we're going to enter in, praise the Lord, amen, because we have gave our lives to Christ, amen. But those that didn't, uh, hell is going to be their home. Then, later on, there's going to be the great white throne judgment that people are going to stand before. And that's when the resurrection from hell is going to happen. Everybody's going to be pulled up, and then the final judgment is going to happen. And that's when everyone that is not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life is going to be cast into, well, outer darkness, Gehenna, the lake of fire, with all nations and people that forget God. Scary to even think about. 
many things in the Word of God people need to read and be thinking about. Especially if you're not saved, if you're not on fire for God, and you're not working for God, you need to get on fire for God. Because <laughs> there's a fire that's waiting later on. If you're saved and walking in the will of God, you ain't got anything to worry about. Amen. Praise the Lord. As long as you stay in the will of God and walk in it, the beauty of holiness. Amen. That holy set aside. Walk on that narrow way that leadeth to life everlasting, as we say. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry if I'm not talking too strong either. Sore throat. That's that's what the tea's for. <laughs> so. So in Romans chapter 1 and verse 22, that's where we're going to start. And by the way, I guess you've already figured out, this is Tim with the Word of Life Church. We are located at 1516 Midway Road, Straw Plains, Tennessee. Zip is 37871. That's the Word of Life Church. And our pastor there is Junior Mount. And on behalf of Pastor Mount, the congregation and myself, I'd like to give you an open invitation, as always, to uh, come and visit us. Uh, anybody that uh, has an evangelist wants to come out and visit us, or anybody that's looking for a church wants to come and visit us, and uh, uh, if it's not what you're looking for, uh, then pray. The Lord will send you somewhere where he uh, He would have you to be, because he, uh, he does. He places you in the body as it pleases Him. Amen. But... Uh, like if you come out and uh, pay us a visit and uh, worship with us and if uh, you know we preach you the gospel if you're not saved and you're looking for a church that's going to preach you the gospel we'll preach you the gospel of Christ Jesus Christ amen we preach the Bible we're a King James Church uh, King James Bible Church and uh, uh, we just uh, want to serve the Lord amen that's our goal and uh we preach a strong doctrine, uh, and uh, we just want to we just want to serve the Lord. You know, we're just a small church on the side of the on the side of the road, and uh, you know that's just uh, we're kind of an old fashioned church, and that's that's how we like it. But uh, you know, the Lord blesses. It doesn't matter if it says we're two or three together. He is there in the midst. Amen. Amen. But. Uh, said if uh, not uh, not your liking then uh, like I said pray and he'll place you where he wants you to be because if you're saved and you're looking for work then he's got a job for you somewhere because when you're saved he'll put you to work <laughs> and nothing else the great commission you can be a witness to somebody of how the Lord has blessed you and saved you amen uh, also if you I always make this disclaimer because some people, you know, uh, well, I'm not saying anything bad, but, uh, you know, I just like to put this disclaimer in. If you belong to a church, uh, I know the people like to visit sometimes, and I, that's fine, they look good, but I always like to say, if you belong to a church, be at your church and support your pastor and your congregation because we feel that's right in the Lord for you to do that. Uh, because you know your 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 uh, your church your your fellow brothers and sisters and your pastor likes to see you at church at your church and uh, like for you to be there and supporting them and worshiping with them. So we just I like I always like to put that in there that disclaimer. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we'll uh, get into the scriptures here. Apologize as as I said again if I seem a little bit scattered, just kind of feeling, you know, it's one of these little five day viruses that's going around that the doctors are saying that are around. So uh, any prayers, just send them my way. And you know, th this as I was telling uh, somebody earlier via text, this this too shall pass. So anyway, Romans one and twenty two, and uh, Paul saying. I could have went further up, and uh, and I, I was really wanting to go further up, but I was like, okay, I'll go up here. Then I saw that verse there above it, and I said, well, I'll go here. And I just kept doing that, but I, so I had to stop somewhere. This is where I needed to go. So 
Paul's talking, he said, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. What a time period we are living in today that man is professing themselves to be so wise and have so much wisdom that they're becoming fools because they're forgetting God. We have so much technology, so much, oh my goodness, just stuff. You know, these, well, you know, I can, I, I can look right here and see some technology right before me. And, you know, thankful for the technology because it can be used exactly for what I'm doing right now, putting out the gospel. But it can also be used for bad purposes as well, as we know and see it around the world. You know, thinking about, too, wars and rumors of wars i was thinking about at one point uh and uh, earlier wars you know even back in historic uh in history thinking about uh you know at, at times i I'll, I'll get a, a little bit of a stirring to you know think about and you know study uh history like you know back in the you know uh, french and indian war and the uh, revolutionary war and civil war and for, you know, further on, you know, War of 1812, uh, World War One, World War Two, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, last great war that really, truly, really that uh, this country was really together. WW2, right? World War Two. Uh, but uh, it's not not just ground war with troops anymore. You know, it's well, yeah, they they send forth. I'll say this: they send forth special forces ahead of any type of invasion, and, and we saw an invasion force, you know, in Iraq, but there were special reasons behind that. I think we talked about it in an earlier video uh, why they did that. But uh, it's not like it used to be. Now we just have everybody with their, you know, I know it's not this simple, but it's, it's kind of just a representation. Everybody's got their finger on the nuclear button, right? Uh, or... Uh, biological weapons or something like that you know much more much more cleaner to have a bio weapon or say a electromagnetic weapon instead of a nuclear weapon because you render the the area that you're trying to take over useless for thousands and thousands of years if you use a nuclear type weapon so better to use a electromagnetic weapon to shut the shut the area down and you know let's go back to where we're having to use candles and wood burning and you know cooking your food over a fire you know or something like that you know so uh, but we have all this technology that we rely on and we think we're so wise and everybody's just forgotten God and Oh, there is no God, you know, we're going to transcend and, you know, by, by the, uh, I think it's the 2045 initiative now that we're going to be able at that point to have machines and robotic bodies that we're going to be able to transfer our consciousness into them and, you know, hundreds of years or it might be even a thousand years when that computer or robotic body starts to wear out or breaks down we can just transfer our consciousness into another one if something else doesn't come on if if some other form of robotic or some kind of ev evolutionary deal doesn't happen and and you know that's how they're thinking then they don't believe you know there's just no god that we we ourselves are our own gods and we're in control of our own uh evolutionary growth and you know and everything like that you know of course we know there's no, no such thing as true evolutionary you know uh, as they call it you know we evolved in technology wise and, and that sort of thing but we know we didn't evolve from anything with a, the, the protoplasm and uh, you got on then all of a sudden you know uh, something jumped out of the water and then you know monkeys and then caveman and all of a sudden here we are it's such a stupidest idea i've ever heard in my life but you know those that don't want to believe in god you know percept professing themselves to be wise they became fools so <laughs> anyway makes me just that that gets me that gets me stirred up every time when i think about that evolutionary thought and big bang and everything uh you know well when the lord speaks that that that's probably a big bang right there uh but in verse 23 
He says, and it cha and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. So we've got a point right there, and it talks about it up above before. So, so, so they knew God. They knew God. The, 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 Israel, they knew God. Then they know they knew what He did before Him. They knew they remembered how that they they were brought that from their stories and the 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 the, the Ten Commandments and all the other commandments that was given about uh, and, and what happened that Moses had when they the, when they were brought out of Egypt. They knew God. Knew up to that point. But also they, you know, they knew a bunch of other stuff and uh, how false pro other false prophets had come, and of course they knew about this this man Jesus, and uh, but of course they didn't believe he was the son of the living God, which thank the Lord that you and I know that he was the true Son of God. But it didn't change the glory of the uncorruptible God, so that shows they knew that he was God, but didn't want to worship him as the one true God. So they changed his glory, his uncorruptible glory, into an image made like to corruptible man, which man is very corruptible, right? He said, and to birds, and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. You know, at one point, and I've mentioned this before, and this kind of goes along with what this is saying in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel got a a little bit of a viewing about what the ancients of Israel were doing at nighttime, behind the scenes when, you know, they weren't during the day going around, you know, looking all nice and regal and going around playing the role of priest, you know, as I said, playing the role of priest. Going in, there was a room he saw, saw that, that that had images of, I think it said abominable uh, animals, creatures, and other abominable be beasts, if I can talk. <laughs> abominable beasts. It's kind of hard to say. Try that four or five times. Abominable beasts. And all over the chamber and how they were worshiping them. So we got kind of a same situation right here. <laughs> Another case, nothing new under the sun. So they change God to an image of different things. If anyone remembers the Egyptians, they had, now this was brought on by the fallen angels and their worship or, or, or desire to be worshiped and everything. So it was kind of the same thing, and we're going to kind of talk about that a little, a little bit with the time that we have. Too, too much to go into with the time that we have, but maybe we'll go into some more later on. But if everyone remembers the, the gods of Egypt. A lot of those had human bodies, but had animal heads. So there was one that had the head of like a bird or like an eagle, Another had the head of like a crocodile. One had the head of like a snake, you know, so on and so forth. So it's kind of along the same lines here of what, what they were doing. Who knows, maybe they were kind of following suit the way or by memory what the Egyptians did. Or maybe they had something they were going by to... Do, you know, looking at doing to do the same thing. So, and well, listen, that's what we we're talking about earlier here. He said, Wherefore God also gave them up. God giving somebody up. If people want to give up on God themselves, want to change Him, Have no dealings with him anymore. Change him. Give up on him. Deny him. Go back, or rather, go forward, I should say, into apostasy. Go into a t total apostasy. I mean, you totally reject God and you never go back to him again. 
or totally reject Christ and you never go back to him again. Remember, there's no such thing as irresistible grace. If you reject Christ, if you reject God, you go into apostasy. At that day of your death, God is not going to strong arm you into heaven, no matter if you repented one day and you accepted Christ. There are some that teach that God will do that. No, he will not, according to the word of God. If you go into apostasy, God will allow you to do that. You have free choice. Am I sitting here being all high and mighty glorying in that? No. I don't want to see anybody do that. And it's God's will that in this that no one perish. But you make the choice. You make the choice whether or not you go to heaven or you eventually go to hell and then the lake of fire. My choice is to go to heaven and then make the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem my home eventually. That's my choice. I want to be and stay on that narrow way. And I hope that all of you out there have made that choice and that's where you want to go. But at one point, God keeps calling and calling and calling and calling. And you know, he calls once. And then he's not required to call you anymore. So anything after one call from him... It's him showing mercy. Thank the Lord. Some of us were too stubborn to hear his mercy <laughs> the first time, and he had to, or he didn't have to, he didn't have to, but he did. He showed mercy and called us more than one time before we would finally give in and humble ourselves and come back to him and ask for forgiveness and repent and come back to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and for him to restore us and restore our salvation thank the Lord for that for mercy but some people are not going to do that they want to live how they want to live. They want to, listen to this, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. That's how they want to live. They made their choice. It says to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And listen to verse 25. He says, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature. Mean the creature, the creation, more than the creator. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, I think for now I'm going to stop there because after that it gets into where it talks about the, the vile affections and the sodomy and the reasons that, that God gave them over to this. And then they're going, you know, and you know, God's not going to accept that. No sin is going to enter heaven. Especially those sins that it's talking about. It's not that I'm scared to talk about them. I'm just going to end there because I wanted to get this part out here. Talking about that these people worshipped these other things beside God. And who changed the true and living God into things that idols animals and other things other gods you know who knows what all else doesn't really tell a whole awful lot doesn't shed a very whole awful lot of light but other places it it gives keys little little bits of information but it does say worship and serve the cre 
create if I can talk the creature or creation more than the creator who's blessed forever amen so and at one point I read now I'm gonna go back go back here let's see here scroll down here Now, there's other verses to read, but I wanted to read. This is actually the last verse that this phrase is in. But I wanted, I wanted to read it first before I wanted to go back. Now, now this is in the book of, uh, excuse me, my nose itch. Uh, this is in the book of Acts, chapter 7 and verse 42. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I can back up. I'm just going to go there. Now, this is talking about when they were brought out, the Israel was brought out of Egypt. I'm going to start 39, Acts 7, 39. It says, To whom our fathers would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again unto Egypt. It's when they were at the, at the mount. And, you know, Moses was up getting the commandments. Of course, Israel was tired of waiting and grumbling and complaining, as, you know, as, as usual. <laughs> but it said in verse 4, it says, Say unto Aaron, make us gods. So they were into one thing, idol worship, which, which you'll find today, idol worship, What's an idol? What whatever you put in front of God, it can be exactly what I'm on right now, which is a a, a laptop. You can make that your idol. It doesn't matter. Whatever you place before God or whoever you place before God. But saying unto, saying unto Aaron, make us gods to go before us. For as for this Moses, which brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. Because you know he'd been up in the mount for a long time. They were tired of wait. Sometimes you've got to wait on God. You've got to wait on the answer. Remember what I talked about the other night when you had put ask God for something and faith believing place it in His hands. You can't be like the wave the ocean tossed to and from. You got to be consistent with your faith and belief. But in forty one, it says, and they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hand. May am an idol. So, one, one thing, idol worship. Now the next thing in verse 42, listen to this. Then God turned and gave them up Sounds familiar phrase. Gave them up. We, didn't we just read that in the book of Acts? Or <sighs> mine's not working out. Then God turned and gave them up to worship, and gave them up, up to worship the host of heaven. What's the host of heaven? Go ahead and read the rest of it. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness. I, I meant to say in the book of Romans a minute ago when it talks about them, uh, gave them up. Like I said, my mind's not working right tonight. Sorry. But I said... Gave them up to worship the host of heaven. What's the host of heaven? Okay, I'm going to read this next verse and we're going to talk. It's in, Acts, or in 7, 43, it says, Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch. Very, very bad idol and, well, demonic entity behind it that 
that's that that demonic god de demanded and accepted and wanted child sacrifice. You got to remember, Paul even stated that the Gentiles worshipped idols and that behind idols were demonic spirits, right? He said that. So, and he said, and the star of your god, Remphan. He said, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. But not a very nice place, Babylon. Got a lot of bad stuff from ba Babylon. So, back to Acts 7 and 42. So seven. We have got about twenty more minutes. Get a, get most of it. I can't get all of it out. But said, so, and God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. Of course, offered slain beasts and sacrifices. So now I'm going to back up. And, and I think I've done the search on this before, but I had forgot how many times the host of heaven. Now you've got to look at uh, the verse or verses that that phrase is in and you've got to look at the context to understand what it's talking about. Now I'll just go ahead and say it and we'll see some of the verses that, that it, I'll, I'll read. I'll, I've looked them up here and we'll read a few of the verses. Sometimes it is talking about maybe stars or the celestial bodies. Other times, the host of heaven is talking about the angelic beings. Uh, sometimes it's talking about uh, good angels that still serve God. Other times it's talking about uh, the fallen angels. You just got to read the passage and the, all all around it to, like I said, get what context it's talking about. So, but this right here it says, then, then God turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it is written. And then it talks about the idols after it. You're led to think that it's talking about the bad part of that. Uh, now, let's see, go up here. In Deuteronomy 4.19, let me, let me read this. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided all nations under the whole heaven. Now you got to read that carefully. So the sea is the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, should us be driven to worship them. So it's already talking about these celestial, large celestial bodies and stars. Now let's go down here. I'm gonna read a few of these, and you read them for yourself and go to these. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you where they are here. These. Uh, the book chapter and verse and you go back and read around them and you get the context out of them and see what they're saying to you. And now listen to this. In De Deuteronomy 17 and 3 it says, And hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded. I know this is a little bit different, but this is kind of giving you homework <laughs> if you know to go ahead and read the, some of this stuff. In 1 Kings 22 and 19, he said, And he said, Hear thou, therefore, the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. Hmm. That one's kind of easy. <laughs> Second Kings 17 and 16. 
And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove. Oh, we know which God's being talked about when you talk about groves, right? And worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal, or Baal, however you want to pronounce it. When a grove's being mentioned, it's going to be Baal, or Baal, Baal. <laughs> it's pronounced both ways. Second Kings 21 and 3. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove, as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. Hmm. Second Kings 21 and 5. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Second Kings 23 and 4. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, and the priest of the second order, and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove, and for all the host of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the field of Kidron, and carried the ashes of them into Bethel. Last one. And he put down the idolaters, Second Kings 23 and 5, sorry. And he put down the idolatrous priest whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the city of, cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the hosts of heaven. few verses just to give you homework to go and read and round it and see what you get out of it. Which one's just talking about? Is it talking about celestial bodies such as stars or something like that? Some are. Some are and some are talking about the angelic realm. The angels of God or the fallen angels. See, some were being worshipped and some fell because of pride. Look how the Lucifer fell, son of the morning, or son of the morning star. That was how it was, the word is put in there for that, Lucifer. That's what that phrase means, and that's why that word was put in the, the King James. And we can go into some other stuff about that, but uh, not with the time that we have left right now uh, too much, but uh, pride. Saying the angels have pride. The angels have free will. They took up and fell with Satan. At one point, it says we shall judge angels. Why would we need to judge angels if they don't have the free will? Because some people may take, you know, take issue with that on me. Say, oh, well, that means that means something else. It means well, well. Maybe. I'm just throwing it out there. Norm the host of heaven does mean the angels. But that goes along with what we were talking about with Genesis 6 and the sons of God, the, the fallen angels, and, you know, 
and it talks about them in Job, and it talks about the sons of God, and Satan came with them as well, and it you know, talks about the creation, the morning stars, and uh, the, the sons of God shouted for joy at the creation. So there is much more going on spiritually and supernaturally that is affecting our environment, our natural realm, than we understand or that we know or that we can see, even right now as I'm doing this video. If but a tear <laughs> into the spiritual realm could be even open, how wondrous. People say, oh, I don't want to see it, I don't want to see it. Well, I can understand that, but the curiosity, the mystery, just to be able to see into it. Wow. <laughs> that just gives, you know, that's that's exciting to think about. Now, one of these days, I'm not going to have to have that curiosity or that, you know, that good because... I don't have that, that that hope and that faith and all that. I'm not going to need it because I'm going to see all of that. I get that glorified body and I'm going to see all that. If I lay my head down here in physical death or should the Lord come and call the church out, either way, I'm going to see that. My spiritual eyes with that spiritual body. If we're going to see in the normal turn or normal thought of seeing as we see down here in this physical body, so brother, why wouldn't you? If you're going to have a spiritual body or something, but we may see in a different way than just as we see here with these natural eyes, may see in a different manner think about this speculation but think about this we may see colors new colors that that don't even exist in this side of eternity colors new uh, colors that you know of a, a, a new color spectrum of stuff that we didn't know existed. You know, these ph physicists are, you know, these quantum physicists are, are and uh, are all excited about string theory and, you know, quantum entanglement and everything and say, oh, there could be 10 dimensions and or maybe even 11 and stuff like that. And, you know, all, all we can go, all we can get to right and think about is really four dimensions, which the fourth one being time. Well, think about when we go to that. If there, if there is that many, even more, who knows? Might be able to do and go wherever. Think, I'm just speculating, but think about all that. Think about in the spiritual. This is just a taste. But it just shows how much the spiritual is married up with the natural it's like this but yet we can't see it's all around us surrounds it, it's 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 married up with the natural but yet we can't see it it is right here it is right here it is you know it's the veil the veil was torn wow that gets me excited folks i don't know about you but you know what you got to do one thing. If you want to see all that, you're going to have to do one thing. If the Lord's convicting your heart of the sinful life that you're leading, and He wants you to come to an altar of repentance, if you lived a life of sin, debauchery, of whatever it is, and He's saying, I've got a better way for you. Said, so if you're wanting to see heaven, if you're wanting to 
do a better life, start a better life. And maybe you're even saying, once I get my life straightened out, I'll start going to church and everything. No, 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 no. That's a falsehood. Enemies put that in your head. You get saved first. The Lord saves you. And then he starts straightening things out in your life. How do you do that? You find you an altar of repentance. And that can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be inside a church. You repent from the sins. All the sins you don't have to name because you won't be able to name them all. You repent from the sins you've committed. You ask the Lord to forgive you from the sins you've committed. And you ask the Lord to save you, to come into your heart, and take up abode there, and that you'll serve him the remainder of your days. And you want to make heaven your home. And he will save you, and he'll take up a bow in your heart and be there forever. As I always say, confession is made unto salvation. Tell someone. Make a public... Uh, tell, tell that you're saved, that you're on your way to heaven. The Lord Jesus has saved you, and he's in your heart. And share that message. Amen. If you've actually known the Lord, you've been saved before, and you've went back out in the world... You know, you know you need to get back before it's everlasting too late. With the world, the shape that it's in, the things that's going on, things we talked about today, the apostasy that people's going into and that's coming upon the world, you know you need to come back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. If you want to make heaven your home, like you once did when you served the Lord, Come back to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. Amen. Amen. Well, that's what the Lord had for tonight. I enjoyed it because this is part of the area that I love studying. And we could go into a lot more. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that's it tonight. And I thank the Lord for it. Thank you for his word. Uh Read these verses and read these areas in the and read all the verses and get into context and see what they mean to you. And uh, like I said, give you a little homework. <laughs> need to get we all need to get more more in the Word of God and study and know His Word. Uh, you know how to be able to give an answer to all those that may have a a question to you about the Word of God. Amen. Most of all, need to get. Uh, uh, be able to lead people to an altar of repentance uh, the Holy Ghost drawing them and you praying with them helping them seek and save that which is lost secondary mission destroy the works of the enemy amen amen praise the Lord thank the Lord for his salvation pray for one another exhort one another lift one another up in prayer pray for all of our churches and let's pray for a harvest a revival, a true revival where souls can be saved and uh, pray for our nation <laughs> and really pray for our nation and uh, let's just continue on um, pray for uh, our missionaries here and abroad especially the ones that are abroad because they are under severe tribulation and uh, under threat of death so pray for them. And as always, you spiritual warriors, you, you prayer warriors, meet me on that battlefield. Let's pray against the enemies. Uh, remember, uh, Lamas or Luna Sod on uh, August 1st, pray against it. The Wiccan Satanic Holiday. I uh, won't go into detail about all the things that go on there. Just say it's bad stuff as usual. You know, no point in hammering out all the stuff that goes on that's ritualistic and sacrificial. Pray about it. Pray against it. In the name of Jesus. So, anyway, take care. Uh, God bless y'all. Blessings in Christ Jesus. Each and every one of you. And take care. We'll see you in the next video. Bye now.